Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap where I have three stories this week. One is called, I let a bird nest in my hair for 84 days. Amazing story. The Goldilocks bird and an amazing story about swifts responding to a lunar eclipse. Hi, I'm Neil Hermes and welcome to my weekly bird wrap. And my first story, uh, it just caught my eye, this article in a in a magazine I was reading, it said, I let a bird nest in my hair for 84 days. Now with a heading like that, you really have to read the story. Now the story was that uh, this lady from the UK was in Africa and someone brought to her an orphaned bird and she started to care for this bird. And after a period, it started to uh, roost in her hand during the day. She let it roost on her, uh, on her shoulder. And in the end, it started, uh, uh, well, in the end, as it, as it grew, it started then live in her, she had very long hair, and it nested in her hair during the day. So for 84 days, she cared for this bird. It was a bronze mannequin, a little tiny finch. Um, and she cared for this bird until it actually flew off and joined a flock of uh, wild birds. Now, when it said it nested in her hair, it didn't sort of stay in her hair all the time. These birds are interesting in that they build a new nest, the bronze uh, mannequins, this little finch, builds a new nest every every evening to roost in. And then every day it goes off and feeds and then it makes another nest and then roosts in that. And this little bird was was doing that sort of behavior. It was making a bit of a nest in this in Hannah's hair um, to roost in during the evening. And then during the day it would bob around and then it would hop back into her hair. So it wasn't, it didn't make a nest that sat in her hair permanently for 84 days, but it was sort of using the hair as a, as a, as a place to, to roost in the evening. So uh, an amazing commitment from, from Hannah to do this, to care for this little bird and to actually have it survive and go back into the wild. Um, but a very um, intimate sort of connection between a wild bird and a person caring for it while she was rearing it to go back into the wild. So uh, well done, Hannah. And you can read more about this story on the, on the website, the, the, the story of the bronze uh, mannequin or bronze mannequin finch. Uh, they're sometimes called widespread in Africa, this bird, very common bird. Um, sometimes they can be absolutely abundant when there's a lot of food about. Uh, they occur over 8 million kilometres of land right through Central Africa. Um, but this particular little one was, uh, was able to survive because of the, the kind contribution that Hannah made to caring for it on a daily basis for 84 days. My second story today is about Goldilocks birds. Now, Goldilocks bird is a name that's been given to the Plains Wanderer. The Plains Wanderer is a particularly unique Australian bird. It looks a little bit like a quail, but it's a ground dwelling, um, unique uh, bird uh, that's found, it was, used to be found widespread across Southern Australia. Now it's largely confined to the Riverina area of uh, New South Wales, maybe a thousand birds left in the wild. And just recently they've re-released -re uh, or released 10 birds that they bred in captivity into an area that they believe is suitable for them that's been protected from, from predators uh, and is in a condition that they uh, would like. Now, the reason they're called Goldilocks birds is because they do like just a particular sort of pasture to live in. It can't be too dense and it can't be too uh, open. It has to be just right. And so because of this preference for a particular sort of uh, landscape, uh, the Plains Wanderers have been, be, become known as the Goldilocks birds. Now, I'm actually doing a trip out to have a look at some Plains Wanderers later in this year, and you can check out on my safari page about a trip to go and see the Goldilocks bird in the Riverina in New South Wales this coming spring. So my last story this week is about black swifts, and anyone who knows anything about swifts knows how amazing they are. Unlike these wood duck that are on the ground here behind me, Swifts are a bird that can go long, long periods of time without landing on the ground. Now, some research has been done on black swifts just recently as they migrate from Colorado down into, uh, into the Amazon, into uh, Brazil for their wintering. They fly for eight and a half months without landing on the ground. These guys spend most of their time on the ground. Now, swifts are long uh, winged, um, aerial birds that, that feed on insects and are very fast flying. They make nests um, out of uh, spiders' webs and things onto a cliff face. So in Colorado, there'd be a lot of insects in the, in the summer months. 
they would uh, collect food, feed their young, maybe once a day as the young get older. And then when the migration happens, they all leave the cliff tops of, in Colorado and fly down to Brazil. Now, what we've now discovered is for those eight and a half months when they don't land, at night, they will fly up to 2,000, 4,000 meters at night. And they'll continue to feed on insects if they can find them. And on a moonlit night, when they fly up into the very high parts of the atmosphere, they're catching insects in the moonlight as they travel down to Brazil. This has all been um, discovered using GPS trackers. And one of the amazing things that happened is during one of these migratory flights, there was a lunar eclipse. So these birds are flying at night to 4,000 meters high. The moon gets uh, covered over for a period. Immediately these swifts in the night descended down to much lower levels as they're flying. And once the moon became visible again, they then rose back up and con continued to fly in these high, high areas. Extraordinary behavior from an amazing bird, the black swift or the American black swift as it's known, the migratory bird from uh, North America to South America every year. Uh, and we're now learning more about their behavior and in fact, you know, how they're able to, to manage to continue to feed when they don't land. I hope you've enjoyed those three stories uh, in this week's wrap. If you want to see more stories, check out my YouTube channel. If you want to see more about my safaris, in particular the ones that see the Goldilocks bird, check out the safari page. Um, and look at uh, my page for other little tips about how to bird watch and uh, bird watching uh, techniques. Uh, thanks for watching and happy birding.